Welcome back, everybody. Today in the spotlight, the cheapest spotlight, the Gardner Bender GDT 311. And whoa, when I say this thing is featureless, AKA sparse, AKA not a lot going on here. I ain't kidding. Gardner Bender is a pretty popular name in North America, at least. Um, boy, I swear to God, in every garage, there's probably a Gardner Bender multimeter lying around. I mean, this brand has been around for a while. Uh, yeah, not synonymous perhaps with ultra high quality, but definitely hardware store variant. Uh, that's really popular. While this company has a rich American history, over uh, 60 years old, founded way back in 1959 by James Gardner. Amazing, so they've been around for quite a while. Now the GDT311 multimeter is, well, the low end of the spectrum. This is as basic as it gets, and I mean, this is really basic. We're talking three functions, 2000 count, that's it, that's all. There is not much going on here. But um, sadly, it's also rather expensive. I paid almost 30 bucks Canadian for this uh, from Amazon. So considering you're getting not so much in terms of functionality, you're still paying a pretty hefty price. So one of these bubble wraps, well protected, has the lowdown on all the specs. Yeah, not too many, is there? Test leads don't feel that bad, really. They have a one amp rating on them, even though this uh, meter does not do current whatsoever. They have that CD, CE logo here, and they have a cat, Cat 3 500 volt rating. So, well, you know, not too shabby, all things considered. Uh, nice and pointy. Whoa, those are pointy. And how about those shrouds? No, not too long, not too short. They should fit just so. These and test leads are in there pretty good. Uh, no worries about them coming apart. Uh, the housing the small itself shroud. is very plasticky, um, very cheap feeling. Uh, you know what? Yeah, Harbor Freight style, uh, you know. Uh, blah. It's not squeaky or anything, but it just, you know, it's just not the greatest out there. And you'll notice no tilt stand on the GDT311. Oh, why? Why, Gardner Bender? This would be a perfect, you know, case scenario to have a tilt stand. I don't understand why they don't have one. <sighs> that selector switch as well, um, you really got to dig in there deep. Pretty small, uh, so it's hard to really get in there. Now, if you had gloves on, this would be a real tough one to change. That being said, it does hit those ranges with authority, and uh, you know, it, it's got a nice solid click, so not so bad. Take a look at that selector switch starting off at the midnight or off position. Volts AC up to 200 volts, volts DC up to 500 volts, resistance up to 2 mega ohm. Bottom of the meter, we only have two inputs on the left, the voltage and resistance on the right are common or ground. And while we're down there, there's something I'm not really impressed with. Oh yeah, why, oh why, is that negative input, red, the same color as the positive. Now I know they do have this black circular casing here, but still, you know, lighting low, low lighting conditions, uh, you know, that's dangerous. So uh, don't like it, don't like it. Now it does have that Intertech logo, um, ETL rated, so we have third-party certification here and it conforms to UL standards 61010 and 61010033031. Not bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, let's turn the meter on, shall we? And we are greeted with that 2000 count LCD display. Nothing fancy going on here. Um, that being said, the digits are actually quite bold, quite clear. Um, you know, they're okay. We don't have a backlight with this as well, so you want to make sure you do have at least some decent contrast. And, you know, do we lose anything? Well, not too much, actually. So, not the biggest digits out there, but uh, definitely readable. Um, it's small. It's a small meter, but look at this. Even though it's the same size, or perhaps just a tad smaller, the digits on this are huge! So much more readable, easy on the eyes compared to the Gardner Bender. Uh, wow, so only three functions on this multimeter. It's gonna be a quick review. Sitting at 5.00 volts. Hey, what do you know? That's pretty good. 5.00 is definitely what we want to see. AC volts now. Remember, this is not true RMS. 119.2 volts AC, so eh, not to worry. Finally, we're gonna look at resistance. Now this has a very small two mega ohm limit, so you're not gonna be able to test a whole lot of resistors uh, with this meter. Anyway, one mega Okay, sitting at 600 ohm right now. Let's bring it down to 500 ohm, 400, 
300, 200, and 100. Eh, not so shabby. And finally, 100 ohm precision resistor. And are we gonna get to 100 even, Steven? Are we, are we? Oh, so close, but yet so far. Hey, that's still pretty close. Oh, teaser, teaser. Oh no, okay, well. You so like literally that's it. I mean, that is all there is to this meter. Some very, very basic testing functionality. And that is it. Not even NCV or live wire, like nothing, nothing. Not even a one touch hold. Ah, <sighs> let's take a look on the inside. Okay, teardown time. So let's take a look at the reverse side. A new shielding, well, no surprise. Wasn't expecting really much in this regards. Powered by nine volt battery. We have that connector going on over here. But uh, yeah, that's it, that's all. Do have a little bit of protection as you can see. Now remember, it doesn't do current, so we're not gonna get a whole lot here going on. And it only has that 500 volt uh, DC rating and 200 volt AC, so uh, it's not really designed for uh, uber high voltage. One tiny PTC over here, uh, one diode. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, the main AC is cobbed. And wow, this is really, really sparse. That being said, it's small, it's clean. PCB actually looks fairly thick compared to some of those uh, 800 clones. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. So here we are, other side of the meter, and wow, another crop circle, check it out. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of rotary selector tracks for a, such a minute uh, performing meter. What the heck is that all about? Uh, but they do use some dielectric once again, so that's a good thing. So we got a little bit of grease going on there. Grease is the word. The inputs themselves are in there really nice and solid. Look at that, definitely not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, nice attention to Finding detail. Finding the rolling selector switch. Oh, we have that rubber mechanism here, or plastic, and that just feeds like so. It's actually pretty robust, pretty versatile, and uh, once again, long-term wear and tear. Haven't seen any issues with this type of rotary selector switch at all. Six nice looking pads, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there is our main display and nothing underneath other than that little plastic housing. So slim pickings, let's put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on GDT311. Wow, what can I say? This is a really sparse multimeter. That was a short review. Honestly, for almost 30 bucks Canadian, about 26 US, uh, I expected more, more functionality, at least a little more. It does all the basics, resistance, uh, and voltage, AC, DC, but you know what? Considering what you're paying, almost 30 bucks Canadian, $27 US, you can still do a lot better in the cheapo arena and get a lot more functionality. It's hard for me to recommend this multimeter. It was really good at what it did. It just didn't do enough. The Gardener Bender GDT311 gets a very uninspiring two out of five stars. Hey, save your hard-earned bucks. Thanks for watching this short review, everybody. Stay tuned, lots more coming up. October's gonna be a fun month, and November and December too. Till the next one, keep on testing.